Welcome back. Well, remember last week, Mike Pence's plane slid off the runway at LaGuardia Airport while landing during heavy rain, putting the spotlight on an airport that has come under intense bipartisan criticism. Our airports are like from a third world country. You land at LaGuardia, you land at Kennedy, you land at LAX, you land at Newark, and you come in from Dubai and Qatar, and you see these incredible, you come in from China, you see these incredible airports. If I blindfolded someone and took him at 2 o'clock in the morning into the airport in Hong Kong and said, where do you think you are? They said, this must be America. It's a modern airport. If I took him blindfolded and took to the LaGuardia Airport in New York, you must think I must be in some third world country. And our next guest will tell us why LaGuardia landed at the bottom of his list among the country's 30 busiest airports. Let's bring in Brian Kelly. He's the founder and CEO of ThePointSky.com. Brian, good to see you. Thanks for having me. So let's just talk about your study, and LaGuardia is the worst U.S. airport. I think we all on the set could have told you that as well. <laughs> um, we agree. Tell us about your study. Yeah. So we took, instead of doing consumer polling on uh, airports, we actually looked at data. So flight cancellations, delays, and then also factored in how easy it is to get to airports in the U.S. So we took the top 30 busiest airports in the U.S. and stacked them up against each other. And the news is not good for New Yorkers. All three New York airports came in last. <laughs> Why? What's, what's the worst part of it? Well, the worst part is the flight delays and cancellations. So LaGuardia is number 30 out of 30 in that department. And it's just also really sad. Our airports are close to the city center, but it takes forever on public transit and requires at least one transfer to get to each of the airports. So uh, many other airports in the U.S. Uh, cleaned up, uh, especially on the West Coast, uh, in terms of getting to the airports. And then once you're there, actually leaving on time. There, but Brian, it's Dagan McDowell, but in terms of the flight delays and managing that aspect of the New York airports, there's not much that the airports themselves can do about it. It's just the heavy level of traffic and the very tight airspace in and around the greater, greater New York area. Absolutely. You know, there, there needs to be a federal investment in, you know, our air traffic control system is outdated. It's over capacity. So, yeah, it's a little unfair to peg that on the New York City airports. But I think this, this survey is not about necessarily placing blame, but it's giving consumers choice. When you have an option of connecting through Charlotte or Philly on your way to Europe, choose them over connecting through New York. A lot of people just don't know the difference and they'll say, okay, I'll connect through New York. But consumers do have options. So that's what we're telling people, that you can connect through better airports. That, that's a great point, but I think for us who live here in New York City, kind of the only real solution is give yourself three hours to get out to JFK because the Van Wick is constantly <laughs> pumping. Which is what you dealt with the other day. Yeah. I kind of like being in an airport. They're full of possibility. <laughs> But getting there is a nightmare. What are the possibilities? The airport I, I club? Just, just, I don't know. Just, you know. Or you can get a manicure. It's more of a feeling. Yeah, you go in the lounge yeah. too early. There's the possibility that you're going to miss your flight if you drink too much. Oh, I've only <laughs> ever missed one flight in my life recently. So the, so the three worst are New York, right, Brian? you got LaGuardia, yes, yes. Uh, JFK, and Newark? Yep. Those All, are the those three, three worst. Came in 20. Those are the three worst. And, but the three best yeah, let's do that. Uh, are... All on the West Coast. So taking uh, the top spot is Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. It's just three miles from outside of downtown Phoenix. Uh, that's, it gets the best ratings for getting in and out of the city center. Also does really well across the board. Free Wi-Fi. We also took into account uh, how nice it is, restaurants per passenger uh, in space. So Phoenix is number one. Portland, uh, Oregon is number two, and San Diego is number three. Cool. I like the Phoenix Airport, but it's so big. Well, and the Detroit Airport, that's one of the worst ones. I like if these people who hate it, they've not been in that light-up tunnel. I'm from Detroit. Is no yeah, one else been the, that? There's the, a the, nice light-up tunnel. The rave. <laughs> you know, pretty colorful. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice. You know what? I'll take that into account for next year's survey. <laughs> should, but with five days before Election Day, any tips for Election Day travelers, Brian? Election day travel. Well, I would just say make sure you vote before you travel. Uh, a lot of uh, you know business travelers can get called on the road, so cast an, uh, an absentee ballot just because you never know if you have to travel for work on election day. All right, Brian. Good to see you. Thank you so much, Brian Kelly, with the latest there.